In Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, Jesus tells His disciples that they should pray for those who persecute you. This is timely instruction for our nation, especially during these turbulent times. But have you ever wondered what praying for your enemies does? After all, they don't see or hear the prayer, so how can it affect them? The wonderful thing about prayer is that you don't have to witness it or even believe in it for it to affect you. This should be encouraging for us when we have to deal with an enemy and help us pray for them for several reasons. First of all, you're not defeated just because your foe is an unbeliever. Of course, this assumes that your enemy is an unbeliever. In my experience, I have found it easier to forgive and pray for those who don't believe because I'm not expecting them to act like believers in the first place. Those whose lives are not consciously led by the Lord shouldn't be expected to act like Christians because they don't believe. This is why I find it easier to offer them forgiveness. Most times they don't know what they're doing, who they're doing it to, and the consequences they face from an avenging God. I get why Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. The offense that really hurts is the one committed by a believer in Christ. Many times your worst enemy is in the church, singing alongside you or serving you the communion. It's easy to pray for someone who is lost, doesn't know, refuses spiritual things. You can feel sorry for this person and more easily forgive them because they are offending in ignorance. But how to forgive a brother who shares the faith and worships alongside you? Even for this brother in this situation, prayer is the answer and the power required to heal because the one who answers prayer is the Lord of both you and your enemy, believer or non-believer. Number two, the prayer of a righteous person can avail much. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. James chapter 5, verse 16. Only a believer can effectively offer a prayer to God. I'm often saddened at the thought of how much energy is expended throughout the world every day and night by sincere people who are praying to entities and ancestors and beings that are not God and have no power to hear, let alone answer, prayer. This knowledge alone should spur us on to pray fervently, not only for our enemies, but also that God send out workers to proclaim the good news of the only true God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As far as our personal enemies are concerned, we need to pray for them because no one else may be praying for them. And finally, we have to remember that all things do work for good and God's purpose. As Paul writes, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Even those who consciously work against God are ultimately in His service and our prayers put them there. The only difference is that they will serve unknowingly and will not receive any reward for their effort. There's no reason to feel helpless when confronted with our various enemies in this life because God has clearly instructed us in what to do in order to defeat them. Love them so that their attack becomes unwarranted and worthy of judgment. Pray for them so that God will work directly in their lives either to limit their attack or win them over to faith and fellowship. Either way, prayer is the key to victory.